Christian Livingstone here again, and let's do that demo now. I have the motor on the uh, trike. Uh, this is uh, this is what we're doing here. This uh, Cyclone mid drive uh, motor mount. It was the the factory one was not very good. And uh, what I came up with uh, was these collars here, and, and we've talked about it earlier. So I still had those uh, obstacles about you know where to mount this because this tube is in the way up here and if you mounted it here it would just be a big obstruction so you know I thought about modifying this and blah 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 and you know this uh, this kit comes with this uh, worm drive a hose clamp this big old thing that wraps around the motor and then uh, they have a, a big old zip tie that you know it's a, a kind of a cheap way to keep this from wandering around on the axis and uh, undoubtedly you know people aren't going to like it I, I really don't blame you know the cyclone producers for doing that because uh, it does give people the ability to get up and running with these systems all the quicker and uh, you know every application is different there's so many bike designs out there you know doing that you know at least gets people up and running until they you know, decide how they want to uh, develop some other way of holding that in a, a fixed position. But uh, I think uh, what I'm uh, going to do ultimately is, uh, you know, I like uh, I like collars. You see, there's a, a collar holding a two-piece uh, split collar there. I like using collars as. Uh, mounting brackets and, and uh, fitting hardware too so I'm thinking you know this thing this thing rotates on that axis because you know that's just the nature of how it's mounted in here it just it's not fixed and so I'm thinking I'll just put uh, a couple of these big split collars Th these tubes are one and a half inch diameter. So I'm simply going to uh, form a, a reference point uh, for lining up this motor and this chain line to it. You see, there's the sprocket, there's the outer sprocket. We're going to get them lined up. And uh, the best reference point I think I can have, and I kind of already know where it is, but uh, it's on one of these uh, bolts. I'm simply going to mark a line, a half. That's where it's going to be uh, referenced. Take those two together, and this can go wherever it wants, even around the, the curved area of the, the tube. Uh, you know, once it finds its uh, spot, when you clamp it down, it, it won't move uh, in conjunction with the other one. Here is that mount. These are those two collars we talked about, and uh, here's the motor. Uh, mounted up. It's just to this uh, drive here, not out to the final drive yet, but I thought I'd show it uh, actually uh, uh, rotating and, and functioning so that, uh, you know, people can start to uh, take advantage of this as a solution for mounting these because these are really brilliant uh, systems, I believe. They're a little more, you know, brutish than some of the more refined systems like the Buffon uh, HD, I think, uh, you know, those are great, uh, and who knows, I'll, I'll probably uh, utilize one of those in the future, but for now, these babies are about half the price. At $389 from uh, Luna Cycle, you know, you get the uh, controller down here, and, uh, uh, you know, the throttle and stuff, so it is, it's a real good value, and it uh, puts out uh, uh, crazy power, so you know, if you're an enthusiast and maybe want to go for something that takes a little more creativity in, in mounting, uh, absolutely. This is, this is a, a, it's been a fun project for, for me so far. And okay, and that's what we're going for. That uh, flat spot on top, beveled on each side to uh, fit up with this, uh, this kind of tab right there. And as you can see, we'll get uh, a nice good weld inside that crevice there and uh, you know of course on your uh, grinding wheel and your uh, flap disc uh, uh, you know the aluminum loads up on those but no big deal so okay Christian Livingstone here and I've got those aluminum collars and uh, I'm getting ready to weld them up but before I do that 
I just want to show you, you know, how I uh, prepped them. You know, you can see I've left uh, about a one inch flat spot for these little cha these little uh, barrels to go on top of. These came right off the existing uh, mount from the uh, Cyclone motor, but we're not using it. We're just going to use this piece along with these collars. We're going to weld them together and this will do it. But uh, as you can see, they're uh, flat on top. There's a little bevel on each side. I've kind of beveled this a little bit too. I'm not a, a TIG uh, welding expert, especially not the aluminum TIG uh, welding. The, the green machine in the back is uh, pretty new to me. Before that, I had a TIG machine that was uh, DC only. And, and uh, you know, if you know anything about TIG, you know, DC does the mild and stainless steel and the AC units like that one there. Newer, better, more expensive uh, will allow you to do uh, aluminum. And that's what I wanted to do. And I almost overlooked uh, aluminum as a, a, a possibility for this. I went ahead and ordered some uh, collars of, uh, you know, plain old steel. And uh, my neighbor gave me a, a slab of this uh, uh, bar stock here. I was just going to fashion these little little tabs out of this uh, stuff here, just uh, cut them and drill the holes just like this, but I thought, no, what? I got this uh, little aluminum welder to weld aluminum. Why don't I, I see if I can uh, find some uh, collars that are inexpensive, and they are. They're, they're not expensive. These were a little over 10 bucks a piece. The regular steel ones were uh, eight bucks, eight 50 or something like that. So the price is uh, uh, not uh, much more for aluminum. And of course, aluminum's lighter. Uh, I like the uh, uh, unpainted brushed metal finish that aluminum and stainless uh, give you. So that's another reason for wanting to do this. And uh, honestly, this will be my first aluminum project, actually uh, something uh, functional uh, produced other than just uh, practicing with beads and stuff like that. So uh, so it's kind of exciting and uh, you know we're gonna get it uh, squared away for this uh, cyclone uh, mount which uh, really is kind of lacking in the way uh, that it comes with the mounts and uh, again I'll, I'll just mention this is probably a good solution if your if your uh, reference point on these motors mine just happened to be right in the middle of where that tab uh, would be so that means I don't have to worry about anything I just put it right in the center weld it and that's where I'm going to stick it but I suppose if, if your a, a particular bike frame is a little offset you could you could come off center a little from the collar a bit but I wouldn't go too much if you've got uh, if you're off center much don't you know try to get out that far you know, go ahead and uh, get the steel and, you know, uh, cut something that, you know, brings it up a little bit and uh, brings it up and diagonal. So you have something under it, you have something to slope back onto the collar and uh, that's really the best play for that. But uh, we don't have to worry about that. We're going to, we're going to zip this baby up. I've tacked these babies up so you can see that uh, whatever the uh, alloy is of the collar and this uh, tap barrel part here, they're weldable and you know they tack up pretty good. But uh, I'm going to let it cool very uh, uh, carefully uh, each uh, bit. It's, it's still warm just from these tacks and this is a small part so I recommend that you uh, keep the uh, lower portion of the collar uh, bolted up to this baby because you know if I put too much heat in this uh, this collar is going to want to shrink or distort in, in some way and uh, you know if you have the other side mated to it that way they'll they'll shrink or distort together you don't want those uh, uh, thread holes to, to lose their alignment you want them to stay aligned so you know whatever happens uh, you want them to do it together unit here isn't for, for me per se, but I will keep this as a, a demo and uh, a staging platform for some of the stuff I do. But anyway, uh, let me just uh, show you quickly a little closer. Here's the controller it comes with and the uh, 
throttle, I opted for the, uh, the thumb throttle. And uh, I think standard, it comes with a twist grip. But uh, both of them have an on and off switch here with like a Christmas tree lighting system here that uh, it doesn't, I don't like it so much, but uh, yeah, that's what it is. I've got a uh, 52 uh, volt battery there, uh, and they charge up to about uh, 58 volts. So uh, the controller's 40 volts, the battery's 58 volts, and uh, that means this thing will uh, uh, put out uh, well over 2,000 watts, which uh, equates to oh uh, three three horsepower this is about three horsepower with that now this motor will put out more than that it'll put it's advertised as the 3000 watt cyclone mid drive and uh you know you can get that if you uh use a 72 volt battery with this uh controller so you know there's there's room for for a real uh, thrill seeker here i think i'm going to just stick with the uh, 52 volt battery that's going to be plenty you know, these tires are only 24, 24 inches, and, uh, you know, they're not going to get me the ultimate top speed. I'm guessing that even with these tires, this setup will give me 40, 40 miles an hour. I, I believe I, I saw a review where there was one installed on a two-wheeler with the 26-inch wheels, and uh, with his uh, derailleur uh, gear set, uh, I think he got 45 miles an hour. So I, I honestly, I'm not going for top speed, but I do want some punch. You know, I, if I'm going to put on a big old muscly motor like this, I do want it to, uh, you know, look the part and act the part too. And uh, undoubtedly this will. But for right now, we're just uh, talking about this mount. Uh, and this should be the final uh, weld. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's going well. Some of that smoke might be uh, paint from the underside of this table. I, I believe I painted some of the un underside of this uh, when I uh, put the top on. But let's take a look. And there it is. Nothing to brag about, but uh, I'm not ashamed of it either. The other one looks looks much the same. and. It's a single pass, and that's what I was kind of hoping for, is to just get uh, a good deal of metal over those uh, babies, and uh, uh, so they'll be uh, pretty pretty stout, I think. But, uh, you know, I, I might just grind those smooth and, and make it look uh, like, uh, you know, there was no weld there to begin with. But, uh, yeah, no, I'm liking it. These points I talk about, you know, may be no great revelation for a lot of the, the guys who fabricate the stuff, but if you haven't bought one of these, you don't know, and so I'll point them out, and then maybe that'll help you decide uh, if you do want to go ahead. It'll just, you know, let you know what, uh, what kind of uh, issues you might be in for, and uh, they're not uh, hard to overcome. So anyway, we got uh, the battery plugged in, we got the throttle here, and there is a button, and it's on, and uh, I'll just, uh, and you can see that uh, there's uh, a freewheel here and a freewheel here, that's why, you know, the uh, crank arms don't turn, but while you do pedal, the motor doesn't, you don't have any magnetic drag there, so uh, that's a good thing. And uh, 
it's external. This uh, freewheeling action is external, so unlike a hub motor or even the Buffon uh, mid drives, uh, which have their their freewheeling action uh, to prevent that magnetic drag, they have them internal. This one is external, and I like that. It's uh, it's easier to to fix and diagnose, and boom, there it is. Uh, undoubtedly, it's not very costly, and all of this stuff is not costly on. These controllers, these uh, throttles, and all of this stuff, the parts are uh, low cost, so uh, that's a big plus. Okay, so here you have it. The finished product, uh, like I said, brushed, metal finished, and uh, this is what we were going for, I was going for, is for these two items here to replace the original bracket, which uh, required an idler sprocket and this... Uh, this clamp to uh, keep uh, the motor from wandering on the radius of this uh, bracket. And so none of that will be necessary. Th these will do away with those and uh, also give the ability to uh, 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 tighten the chain for us do-it-yourselfers. And uh, not only that, uh, I use two BMC hub motors on a, a trike just a quick clip of the uh, two-wheel drive uh, electric hand cycle. There's one of the uh, 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 hub motors, geared hub motors, planetary gear hub motors. The other one's over there. And one of them I've modified to be clutchless. When the clutch uh, started failing and uh, uh, I decided not to uh, fix it and just uh, make it clutchless to, uh, you know, kind of sever that weak link. And uh, it works fine. I dig it uh, in the uh, headset there. That's a bottom bracket up top. You see a video camera. That starts automatically, and it's a lot of fun. Uh, you know, whenever I'm riding, you know, it records everything in case uh, somebody runs me over and kills me. They can look at that and say, oh, yeah, you know, that guy did it. <laughs> But anyway, these uh, two uh, uh, rear drive hub motors, I've been using it for oh, about a year now. It's, uh, it's winter right now, uh, February, uh, surprisingly warm. But, uh, you know, these uh, uh, two uh, hub motors uh, work really well in the snow and the uh, mud. There's my, uh, uh, you know, Christian anarchist plate. Uh, you know, I read the Bible and I, I read between the lines and I can see that... Uh, you know, the, the message in the gospel of the kingdom uh, of Christ uh, is uh, very anti-statist. And uh, so, you know, I want nothing to do with the state and the extortion racket that it is. And uh, so, you know, I don't have a social security number or driver's license or any of that stuff. And uh, that's just what that's about. So, yeah, quick clip of the uh, uh, electric hand cycle for a reference and... Uh, you know, it's a lot of fun. So this other trike will undoubtedly be fun too, no matter what I do with it. I, I think I'm just going to use it to uh, 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 as a staging platform for experimenting and, you know, letting people try it and having fun with it. The controller is, is quite good, and it's got a lot of jumpers for settings, and one of the settings it has on it is a, a soft start setting. And, you know, I usually like real quick takeoffs, and even with the soft start on, it does give me those quick takeoffs, but I use it because it prevents, you know, that jump, that lurch, and, uh, you know, when you're rolling around crowded areas where there's people or in tight spaces, you don't want to hit the throttle and have it lunge and maybe spook somebody or, you know, bump into something, so... I use it on the BMC controller because uh, it really is helpful and it doesn't uh, really slow me down. I, I don't want to take off like a rocket, but uh, it gives me quick takeoffs but prevents that lunge. Now, I was curious about that uh, with this because this is 40 amps and my BMCs are only 35 amps. And uh, so I thought, well, you know, this controller doesn't have that, you know, soft start jumper feature. so. What am I going to get out of this? And take a look. Take a look at how smooth that is. Even though this is only a quarter uh, turn or less on the thumb throttle, 
the resolution is very smooth. You know, this baby will start at a crawl. So that's what you can expect, I think. And this is without a load on it, but uh, undoubtedly it'll be the same, uh, or even better, when there is a load to, to get those smooth takeoffs without the lurching. That's it. Full throttle. It doesn't look like much on the sprocket there, but we'll see how it equates to top speed and torque and all that. So a little addendum uh, video that I'm going to do just for this one little segment that is really going to be a bigger part of uh, a video and thread that I've started. And uh, the video uh, is on my YouTube channel and it's uh, called uh, Cyclone uh, Monster E-Trike Build. And... Uh, you know, I'm interacting on a forum, uh, too, for uh, e-bikes, and uh, I bought this uh, Cyclone uh, mid-drive motor, and uh, I'm building up this trike. And it's not my first trike, but uh, it's my first one with this mid-drive, and I'll, I'll show you the motor I have right here, and it, it won't really give you a sense of what the mid-drive is, but I just want to show this little... Uh, piece because uh, I've been waiting for these uh, collars to arrive in the mail and they did today. These are uh, one and a half inch bore split two piece collars and this is what I'm going to use. Two of these uh, to replace uh, what the uh, motor mounting uh, uh, arrangement came with. It came with this and it came with this uh, idler sprocket and we're going to be able to do away with all of that with not much more than these two uh, items here and, and a little bit of steel and a little bit of finessing and uh, so let me show you that motor while I got it open here and uh, the reason I had it open was uh, you know I was waiting for those collars to arrive in the mail so I decided to uh, strip off the paint of this cover and these uh, these covers and some of the other ones down below there uh, look like pretty good quality uh, cast aluminum, which is nice. And so, uh, you know, I like a, a brushed metal finished anyway. And so, uh, you know, aluminum gives that and stainless steel gives that. So, you know, whenever I see uh, cases like this, I'll, I'll try to get the paint off there because I like this finish better. And, you know, of course, it doesn't chip off and scratch uh, like paint does. So... So while I was doing that, you know, I, I took a look at the uh, planetary gear arrangement. These are big, beefy gears, so to speak. And uh, another interesting thing, uh, while I was here, I noticed the uh, outer ring that uh, the gears roll around in is, is just, you know, pressed in with the uh, pressure of the uh, bolts going through here. And so, you know, this is where we're actually going to be uh, mounting pretty much into here. You can see the uh, the typical bracket that it came with. That's about an inch in between there. And uh, I just want to point out, because this potentially could slip around if, you know, if I create too much raised tension up here, when I, you know, make my little uh, mounts, I just want to uh, point out that we don't want to take the tension off this. This gets sandwiched in between here, and we're going to put something in between that, so we don't want to make the tolerance more uh, than is uh, helpful. We want Anyway, here we are, demonstrating the mount, which uh, I think is going to be a great solution for people, uh, because uh, Luna Cycle did get... Uh, uh, an order from from Taiwan these come from Taiwan and uh, he ordered a, a hundred of them and uh, I, I think that's probably the biggest load or order you know to one supplier so you know previously I don't think you know these were available as a kit to to individuals from a source here in North America so this is still kind of a, a new new thing uh, going on now I understand that this particular motor is used in very high-end units because it's so robust. It's low cost, it's robust, and uh, they use them in, you know, these five, eight, ten thousand dollar, you know, off-road uh, 
kamikaze type uh, electric bikes and uh, that's a good thing you know we get them and, and they're cheap to us and uh, they are they're robust and uh, but they haven't been available to us I mean you know these these manufacturers of these uh, high-end bikes you know they they bought them as a uh, you know a manufacturer and a producer but now these are available to us individuals without you know having to worry about uh, directly purchasing them and you know clearing customs or anything. Lewis Cycle uh, took the trouble to do that so he got a boatload of them, sells the kit for three uh, eighty nine, and uh, it's a brilliant value. It looks like all the planets are in alignment as far as the controller and you know it being a smooth and now uh, I believe I've made my little contribution in passing this along that you know I came up with but even though I, I may not leave this here this is a trike and I may put this underneath and uh, but at least for now I'm going to use this as a baseline just so I know you know what to uh, expect from uh, these ratios and these sprocket sizes I'm probably going to change the sprocket sizes and uh, before I move it underneath but Let's move on to those finer points I was talking about in the installation. And one of the finer points, I believe, is these two sprockets right here. I happen to have that one chain is a, uh, a 1 8 chain, and those two sprockets are quite close together. And if you've, uh, if you've got uh, the uh, 1 8 chain and you put the other one for your final drive, you know, they could clang and chafe uh, on each other so you know I'm thinking that maybe uh, if you're going to stick with these same two uh, sprockets use the uh, 3 32nd chains uh, instead of the 1 8 or or put a, a a washer you know at each uh, point of these uh, spacers here in between these spacers there's a spacer and you could create a little more space in between those by putting uh, washers there so so that's uh, what occurred to me. And also, uh, the uh, distance uh, that you have the motor from uh, the bottom bracket down here, you know, undoubtedly you'll want it as tight as possible. And this is as tight as possible I get with the, uh, with the crank arm so it doesn't hit on the motor. It just barely clears that. And you see the offset begins right here and it goes progressively up and then gets back parallel this way. So, you know, you know, upwards and outwards is where the offset begins. So if you bring the motor down any, like I'm thinking about changing the sprocket size here and maybe scooching this motor down a little bit, shortening the chain, I'll undoubtedly have to grind off some of the side, the inner side of this uh, crank arm but these are pretty stout and, and there's plenty of metal here so I wouldn't be afraid to grind off a quarter inch down in this area if that's what I do if I do try to scooch it down there and uh, what else we talked about you know one of the main reasons for this mount was uh, to get rid of that uh, that idler sprocket mechanism jammed right down in there it's unnecessary now you know we could just move this up the tube and uh, that creates our chain tension no need for an idler and uh, these collars you can see negotiate a, a turn in a tube pretty well not perfectly down there you can see I, I kind of ringed out the sides a little bit and, but up top uh, it's quite good but on the turns where they ovalize and shrink uh, on the other side uh, you know it's not as, as elegant there but uh, who cares it works oh what else oh like uh, like I mentioned uh, earlier this space if you're using if you're using this piece off the old uh, mounting hardware like I did I was uh, uh, you know careful not to uh, uh, add on any uh, with the weld or anything but then when I uh, tighten this up there was a there was a little uh, uh, looseness there so I added a washer there is a washer behind uh, right at that point and down below as well 
because uh, there was a little a little uh, gap and a little uh, uh, looseness if I didn't uh, uh, get it just right. So I put the washers in there and that uh, took out any doubt about it being uh, perfectly snug uh, from side to side there. It was hard to tell at first because this chain, I, I put it on so tight that, you know, this thing seemed lock solid. But when I took a closer look, I, I, I found that, yeah, that thing does. It calls for a washer in there. But, you know, if you're going to fabricate this out of uh, mild steel and use steel uh, collars, uh, you know, you can make that with whatever you want. And, uh, you know, if you do it just right, you won't need a washer. But throw in a washer there if it's not. So there you have it. Uh, the uh, Cyclone mid-drive uh, kits are uh, uh, something. They're, they're quite something. And I'm having uh, fun with this project, this trike. I'm not in a big hurry to finish it, uh, but uh, it's going well. I thought I'd pass along that little motor mount uh, uh, tip. And, uh, oh, there's, there's one more thing. Let me, let me show you. On this uh, controller here, those phase wires, you notice how the, the colors are off? You know, the blue to blue, the, the yellow uh, ideally would go to yellow, the green would go to green. They don't on this. I was uh, a little surprised by that. So uh, if, if yours comes that way, don't be surprised. Uh, you know, you could try to turn them around like I did and just check and see if that was uh, better. But no, it's not. The uh, Ignore the colors there. <laughs> If it's uh, if it plugs in uh, not matching the, the wire colors, no biggie. So so I think that'll do it. The uh, Cyclone mid drive kit from Lunacycle is quite good, but uh, it comes with this uh, crazy crazy mounting uh, hardware that. Uh, you know, they got to give you something to, to begin with because there's, there's so many applications and so many adaptations that could happen. Uh, this will get you going, but it, it won't do it in a very uh, elegant fashion, you know, fabrication-wise and, and design-wise. But uh, I think the, uh, the two collars are quite simple and, and just about anybody can get it done. If they don't do a little bit of welding, maybe somebody in their neighborhood uh, could. So watch this little video, show it to them and just say, here, weld up this little thing for me and, uh, you know, I won't bug you anymore. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs>